Now each of you has a copy of the employee handbook with which you'll want to familiarize yourselves. But before I get started, I'd like to tell you a little bit about the store and how it began. Oh, excuse me. Yes, question. Do we get a discount? <laughs> That'll be on page 20. As I was saying, in 1907, in Dallas, Texas, my father, Herbert Marcus, his sister, my Aunt Carrie, and her husband, Al Neiman, opened our first store on the corner of Elm and Murphy Streets. Have it, boy, Stanley. Tell it like it was, warts and all. You sure that's a good idea, Al? Why not, Carrie? I've got nothing to hide. Not now, you mean. Not anymore. Carrie. Herbert's waiting for us. He wants to see us right away. What would happen if we just ignored him for once? I don't know. Herbert's pretty hard to ignore. I know it was awfully hard for me to ignore him. He was the most unusual person I ever knew, and he made me reach out to the edges of myself like he did to explore all the possibilities. That's what he saw where other people saw problems. He saw possibilities. And so I'm very pleased to be with you today to celebrate the opening of our beautiful new store in Boston. <laughs> Sometimes I forget, like, like when 
whenever I come back to Dallas. Please don't start that again. It isn't fair. We're family. So are husbands. <laughs> All right. All right, tell you what. We'll go meet Herbert together. Then you get the afternoon off. And we'll go home and uh, talk things over.
morning I asked Mr. Snyder for a raise. <coughs> I did. He turned me down, but I wouldn't take no for an answer. I spent ten minutes telling him why I deserved a raise. He spent ten minutes telling me why I was lucky to be working for him in the first place. He told me I'd never amount to anything. He asked me just who I thought I was anyhow. And just as I was about to punch him in his nose, he, fired he offered me another dollar, eighty-seven and a half cents a month. That's wonderful! And that's when I quit. <laughs> Sorry, I'm just thinking how surprised he must have been. Not as surprised as I was. <laughs> <laughs> really, Herbert? I don't think you would have taken that raise no matter how much he offered you. It's just that, uh, see, I'm never, I'm never going to work for anybody ever again. I've got plans. I have dreams. I've got ideas. I'm never going to be a nobody with a brown bag lunch. He'll listen to you. He loves you. It's up to you, Harry. Every time you two disagree, you drag me into it. How do you think I feel always having to choose between my husband and my brother? I'll go along with whatever you decide. I bet I'll go too. Just think of it, Harry. The three of us. Partners. Come on, Harry, let's go! <laughs>
near your family. Yes, what's wrong with that? Plenty. What about our plans to move? What about what about Kansas and Missouri? What about us? Well, if you really didn't want to stay, why? No, listen to me. Over? I don't want to stay. But I'm not gonna run. <coughs> and Carrie, I don't want to lose you. I love you. I want to be the one who's always there for you. One you lean on, trust in, count on, run to first when sad type songs begin. To be as necessary as the air to you, all around you, near you, with you, but it feels to me like I just made. Don't 
saw a fire perfect. How come you to come all the way out here to Dallas from Boston? We sure were doing all right without you. <laughs> How come you to come? Well, that's perfectly dreadful. Now, you listen here. May I help you? Yes. I mean, no. She means uh, she was curious about your store. We read your ad. Hello, Carrie. <laughs> Mimi, good to see you. I'm Carrie Neiman. I'm Sophie. I'm Pearl. I'm Edna. <laughs> We are the friend of them, there is no all of them, tells of the bar of our we of the family and the friend, daily we hear should tell from all the bows and big teeth. It's fun to try for one, fun is the eyeful man, love the one who can read. Life is a carousel, life is a fair as well, and the fairest of the fair are we.
Here's something else I'll be taking care of, Herbert. What's in that? This. You got it backwards. <laughs>
shade, maybe. Another fabric? Was it for any special occasion? Your minis, friend. We met at the wedding. You're from... A Boston. Boston. Well, what brings you to Dallas? Pearl. Pearl. The things got a little cold in Boston. Things? I thought maybe a change of climate. Oh? And the truth. I came to meet someone. Anyone in particular? The preferably someone in cattle or cotton or oil. Well, if you the right place. <laughs> Having any luck? Uh, not yet. <laughs> I'm afraid I'm not exactly what a Texan might call the pick up the litter. <laughs> I thought that maybe. Oh, then maybe we could help. Something like that. Ah, something like that. Something like that. Only. Uh, less? Ah. Yeah. <laughs> I think I understand. <laughs> hmm. It would be lovely on you, though. But perhaps some other time. You know, you could do me a great favor. When you wear this dress, and people tell you how stunning you look, and you will look stunning, don't hesitate to tell them where you bought it. You don't understand. I'm not buying the dress. I can't buy the dress. Of course you can. On credit. I can't. Long
enough neighbors. Yeah, but they're smaller than us. Hey, Stanley, come on. No way. Very worst one.
Wake up! 